So Max Verstappen is now a three-time world champion and he sealed his third title by finishing second at the sprint in Qatar. Coming into the Qatar Grand Prix, Max Verstappen had already won 13 of the 16 races this season and he's been on a dominant run. A run that has seen him pretty much obliterate the entire field. Right now, in Formula 1, in a grid that has talents like Lewis Hamilton, Fernando Alonso, Charles Leclerc, Lando Norris, George Russell and others, Max is considered heads and shoulders above everyone. So much so that it raises a very important question. With him sealing the third world championship, does it make him one of the greatest talents to ever drive in Formula 1? Let's talk about it. Now let me clarify one thing, when I'm saying he's one of the GOATs, it does not mean that he is the greatest of all time. We are not having that debate right now. The debate that we are having right now is Max Verstappen belongs on the elite level that has Michael Schumacher, Ayrton Senna, Lewis Hamilton, Juan Manuel Fangio, Alain Prost and other elite drivers. That is what we are discussing right now, that Max Verstappen, by winning his third world championship, belongs in that category. Now, to determine that Max Verstappen belongs in that category, I feel there are certain qualities that some of the greatest talents of all time possess. And if Max Verstappen possesses those qualities, I think he should be in that discussion. Now, the qualities that I'm looking for are statistics, longevity, success against contemporaries, ability to perform in wet weather and have supreme wet weather prowess, and finally, ability to build a team around himself and achieve success through that. Now, if Max Verstappen passes in these criteria, we might be able to say that he belongs in the category of the GOATs. Now, let's see where Max belongs in each of these categories and finally, we can make our judgments ourselves. So, first of all, let's take a look at statistics and accomplishments. Now, looking at the accomplishments and statistics for Max Verstappen, currently, he is top 5 in terms of race wins. He is top 10 in terms of pole positions. There are only 5 drivers that have more title wins than he does at this stage when he is a three-time world champion. To add to this, he has the longest win streak in F1. To add to that, he has most wins by a driver in a single season. He has the most podiums in a season, the most points secured in a season. And finally, just, as, just to bookmark the point of how well and how well-rounded he has been, he was the youngest to win a race in F1. He was the youngest to score points in F1. And he was the youngest to race in a Formula 1 car. And all of these last three records that he has achieved, he has achieved when he did not even have a dominant car under him. And if you look at these records, these are the records of a driver that has accomplished a lot in his career. Does that make him belong in the category of the elites? I'll leave that to your judgment. Next up, we have longevity. And when we talk about longevity, Max Verstappen, it might come as a surprise that since he is still only 26 years of age, Max Verstappen has been in Formula 1 for 9 years. He debuted in 2015 with Toro Rosso and 2023 is his ninth year in Formula 1. Now, if you compare his longevity with Michael Schumacher, Lewis Hamilton, who have been in the sport for more than 15 years, or Fernando Alonso, who has been in the sport for more than 20 years, then of, of course, this number fades in comparison. However, on the other hand, his numbers as the length of his career, they are still quite comparable with the likes of Alain Prost, who was there for 13 years, Nicky Lauda, who was there for 13 years as well, and Jackie Stewart, who was there for 9 years. When we talk about modern standards, in terms of longevity, Max Verstappen is probably not there. But if we talk about him com being compared to the elites, the numbers still kind of stack up to an extent. Next up, after longevity, we have the success against contemporaries. Now, this is a very important factor because when it comes to a driver proving his mettle on a Formula 1 grid, he has to beat his contemporaries and he has to do that in somewhat con comparable machinery. Now, when we talk about Michael Schumacher, he did that against Damon Hill in 1995, where he arguably beat him in a slower car. Then he did that again against uh, Mika Hakkinen in 2000. He did that again in 2003 against Raikkonen and Juan Pablo Montoya. When we talk about Alain Prost, he did that in 1986 when he beat Nelson Piquet and Nigel Mansell. And he did that again against Ayrton Senna when he beat him in 1989. When we talk about Ayrton Senna, Ayrton Senna did that against Alain Prost when he beat him in 1988 and in 1990. And of course, even in 1991, when he was able to hold off Nigel Mansell, who probably had a stronger car at the end of the season. Similarly, if we talk about Max Verstappen, 
I think it's safe to say that the 2021 season and his battle against Lewis Hamilton is arguably one of the best championship battles in terms of driver quality that has ever been there in the history of the sport. And even in that season, Max Verstappen was, in my view, the better driver as compared to Lewis. I've even done a video where I compared both of these drivers race by race and at the end it was quite clear which driver was better and Max clearly held the edge over the entire season. Max even had a better season compared to Charles Leclerc in 2022, another contemporary, especially in the first part of the season because by the time the season continued, uh, Ferrari was not in contention anyway. So yes, when it comes to having success against contemporary, Max has had success against arguably one of the GOATs, Lewis, and he has also had success against a fine talent in Charles Leclerc. Next up, it's wet weather prowess and I think it's safe to say that most of the top F1 drivers like Michael Schumacher, Ayrton Senna, Lewis Hamilton, Fernando Alonso, Sebastian Vettel and even the drivers in the past, they've shown this ability to be to have that special feel in wet weather. Ayrton Senna has some memorable races in the wet. Michael Schumacher too has a lot of them and he truly stood out during his time. Lewis Hamilton has the race in Silverstone in 2008. Turkey 2020 stands out. Fernando Alonso has Malaysia 2012. Sebastian Vettel has Monza 2008. So yes, all of these drivers, all of these goats, the drivers that belong in the top tier to have ever raced in Formula 1, all these drivers have some sensational races in wet weather. Well, Max Verstappen is no different. There are too many races for me to count. I think, first of all, we need to start with Brazil 2016, a race with which he announced himself to the Formula 1 world, where he was just a teenager and he was scything through the field like it was no one's business. And he did that in extreme conditions. And that's not the only race. Every time there's a wet race, you can be rest assured that if there's one driver that is going to stand out, it's going to be Max Verstappen. And that has not changed for a long time. In terms of wet weather prowess, Max ranks very highly amongst all of them. Finally, now the final factor is having the ability to build a team around themselves. Now, this is something that is very special when it comes to a driver because what this shows is an ability beyond just the driving ability on track. This is something that was arguably first pioneered by Niki Lauda when he did that with Ferrari. Jackie Stewart did that to an extent with Tyrrell. Alain Prost did it with McLaren and Michael Schumacher did it brilliantly with Ferrari and ended a two-decade drought of world championships. Now when we talk about Max Verstappen, well he moved to Red Bull in 2016. Very early in his career, he was still a teenager at the time and his first title came in 2021. During that phase, Max Verstappen slowly but steadily took over in the team. When he reached the team and first of all debuted, he was teamed up with Daniel Ricciardo. At the time, Daniel Ricciardo was the team leader. Until 2017, Daniel Ricciardo continued to be the team leader. In 2018, after the Monaco GP 2018, the switch flipped and from that point onwards, Max Verstappen took over and was the lead driver at Red Bull. And from that point onwards, it has only grown strength to strength as he has built the team around himself. Now credit to Red Bull and Christian Horner as well that he identified the talent that was Max Verstappen and built the team around him with the help of Helmut Marko as well as Adrian Newey. And of course, the success has to be the uh, cumulative impact of everyone. But at the end of the day, when we talk about a driver building a team around himself, Red Bull is a team that is entirely built around Max Verstappen. And that is a true hallmark of one of the greatest talents to ever drive in Formula 1. Now, finally, We've gone through all these five points. We've gone through statistics, we've gone through longevity, we've gone through success against contemporaries, we've gone through the wet weather prowess, and we've gone through the ability to build a team around themselves. I can give my opinion, and it could be positive and negative when it comes to whether Max Verstappen ranks amongst the greatest of all time. But at this point in time, I would like to ask your opinion. What do you guys think? I have laid down all the facts. I've laid down everything that I could in terms of criteria to define one of the greatest of all times. You let me know what you think. Do you think Max Verstappen belongs in the category of the goats? If he does, let me know. If he doesn't, do let me know in the comment section as well. Thanks for watching and see you next time.